welcome to the channel dedicated to one of the oldest winemaking countries in the world, Georgia. My name is Daria, I am the big friend of Georgian wine, the wine tour organizer and the co-author of this amazing guide to the wine regions of Georgia. In this channel you are going to get a lot of practical tips about understanding Georgian wine, drinking it, loving it and of course about traveling in Georgia for wine drinking purposes. Follow me. The first winemaking vessel we are going to talk about is the stainless steel vat. Of course, you might have seen it in all possible wineries all around the world. And Georgia is not an exception because this is the most neutral, most convenient winemaking vessel that is good both for a big company and also for the small winemaker who just starts his or her way in the world of wine. The stainless steel vats are the most neutral ones, so it means that they don't have any extra influence on wine taste-wise. The oak barrels do have influence on taste. Many people love these oaky notes in whites and red wines. Uh, it's also the part of the style in some countries and winemaking regions. As for Georgia, I wouldn't say that it's the most popular vessel for fermenting the grapes. It's rather used as the vessel for aging wine, again, to give it certain notes, to make it more round, more fine. I know only one or two winemakers who are actually fermenting their wines in the wooden barrel. As the part of winemaking technology, the wooden barrels arrived to Georgia in the 19th century together with the German settlers. Um, according to the initiative of Emperor Alexander I of Russia and General Yermolov, who was responsible for Caucasus by the time, uh, there was the initiative to give the economic incentives to the German farmers, Germans from Schwabia, to invite them to Georgia in order to improve the level of agriculture here. So there were several hundred families that agreed to move and they arrived to Georgia in 1817 and 1818 mostly. The biggest colony was Katharinenfeld or Bolnisi as it's called now. So the Germans from Bolnisi were making wine in big wooden casks. This is kind of the first precedent of this technology arriving to Georgia. Then, already in the middle of the 19th century, the Georgian nobles decided to practice this method of winemaking in their family estates. Alexander Chavchavadze and Ioane Mohran Batoni were inspired by the French winemaking, so they bought both the barrels and also some other more advanced winemaking tools in order to practice this European style of winemaking here in Georgia. And what about the Georgian traditional way of making wine? Well, it's all related to the vessel called Kvevri. And in the first video, I promised that we will be using this word all the time during our crash course about Georgian wine. So Kvevri is made of clay and it's always buried under the ground. So both fermentation and aging are going on under the ground. And Kvevri is not an amphora in that sense that it was never used for transporting wine. So it's always there sitting at his place in the basement of the cellar or sometimes under the open sky if we speak about the Western Georgian cellars. And it's also neutral. I mentioned the word neutral in relation to stainless steel and you can say it about Kvevri as well. And also it allows the micro oxidation as the barrel but without influence in the taste. So it combines the good properties of both both international winemaking vessels. There is one very important thing, such as cleaning Kvevri. If you want Kvevri to be completely neutral and leave no trace in the taste of wine, you should be very precise uh, while hiring the people who will take care of the hygiene in your cellar. In order to clean Kvevri properly, you need to be a compact person who can go inside because there are very big Kvevris for 1000 liters or 2000 liters or sometimes bigger. So the person should go inside and use the tool made of cherry bark because it's the natural antiseptic. And usually they make this kind of movements for many hours, scratching any traces of the previous wine from the walls. So first of all, it's a very demanding physical labor. And second, it's very responsible because if you do something wrong, the winemaker can lose the whole vintage of this year. 
then why do you need so much trouble, you might ask. Just take the stainless steel vat and then allow microoxidation through some other means. Like, why do you need all that? First of all, Kvevri is the part of Georgian tradition and traditions are very important in this country. Also, UNESCO has recognized this winemaking technology as the part of the uh, world's intangible heritage. So imagine if it existed throughout 8,000 years without any significant breaks, well, why should we abandon it? So, of course, it's important as a part of the tradition. And second, uh, the shape of Kvevri allows the very good natural filtration of the wine. If the winemaker decides to facilitate the longer skin contact, so for six or seven months, as they do in Kaheti, it means that he or she are leaving the already fermented juice and the skins of the grape there in Kvevri, they seal it. And throughout this six or seven months, the skins, the hard particles, are floating down to the bottom of Kvevri. Uh, so now the best part of the wine is the upper part and the middle part, and down there there is this must and the pips of the grape down there in the sharpest part of this egg. This is very essential because once you open Kvevri in spring, the wine in your glass is already clean. And also it has very rich taste due to the, this constant skin contact of the whole mass of juice with the skins. And what's in my glass today? This is Saperavi from Shilda village in Kaheti. In this part of Kaheti, the Saperavis are usually very big, very like meaty, heavy, a lot of tannins, a lot of body. This is the case, but the winemaker Alexei Shaloshvili has used oak here. That's why the tannins are very round and pleasant and smooth. The winemaker's decision was to combine Georgian and international technology. It spent six months in Kvevri and then it was transferred to the oak barrel for several months of aging. And basically this is vintage of 2012. It's not a very frequent case as for Georgian medium-sized producers to keep their wines for so long, because usually a lot of wines go to export and a lot of wines are getting drunk by tourists. So usually the reserve is very small, but I'm glad that Alexei Shaloshvili managed to keep this line till 2020. Also, I should say that Alexei Shaloshvili has a small hotel and the restaurant just near the winery in the vineyards. So it's a beautiful place to be, probably to spend the night and to have a Georgian traditional evening with a lot of wine and some folk music and cooking at the fire. So as the wine tour organizer, I should admit that we do spend some time in his winery. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Leave your comments because the feedback is very important for me. Stay safe and drink Georgian.